and I are going to be uh, talking about our ex partially our experiences in the eMERGE EHR integration work group and some of the areas where we've discussed with the group, uh, you know, as future directions for eMERGE 4. Um, one thing that came up earlier uh, is, is that eMERGE has been a great test bed for genomic discoveries as well as uh, implementation, um, but also for eMERGE 4, it may also be a, a good uh, test bed for this idea of a learning health system where we have uh, clinical practice and uh, research coexisting and we're able to provide the most up-to-date evidence to healthcare providers to use in their care and, um, and also uh, to learn from what's being delivered um, through measuring outcomes uh, such as what was discussed in the last uh, session over time and improving on care uh, throughout the time. And so uh, what we're kind of talking about is decision support as a way of delivering genomics, uh, genomic um, knowledge so that clinicians can better uh, act on that. Uh, and then the outcomes that are coming from the outcomes group might be reported on a regular basis. And then in terms of implementation science, uh, I guess some of the work that we've done within eMERGE 3 has been uh, more informal in terms of understanding what are the needs for uh, formats uh, in, that are delivered by uh, the sequencing centers. And, um, and so what we found through doing informal interviews are that people want the raw data and the structured data and the PDFs. And uh, each site is kind of taking different approaches in terms of what they're doing with uh, with those data, uh, and in, in terms of return of results, uh, we're asked to define our terms. And so I consider clinical decision support broadly, where um, one form of decision support might be consultation, which is kind of what we're doing currently. And like study teams can be considered the consultation service that provide support for healthcare providers in delivering the uh, findings from reports. Another thing that we've done in terms of implementation science in eMERGE 2 was uh, there was a paper by uh, Tim Herr where the barriers to implementation have been captured. And so one thing that we've also done is uh, ask the participants what are the anticipated barriers to implementations that they see in eMERGE 4. And so what we're doing, I mean eMERGE 3, and so what we're doing now is uh, every monthly meeting we're roughly capturing what are kind of the barriers that people are running into. And so when uh, we're asked to go through uh, some challenges that we see as well as uh, future directions, the main uh, four things that came to mind to me are reproducibility, timing and data quality, diversity and replicability. I won't go through these now because I'm going to go through each briefly. Uh, in terms of reproducibility, some of this came up with the phenotyping work group where we have uh, phenotypes that are being developed across the sites and we want to be able to implement them broadly. Um, we might also consider a similar model with clinical decision support where uh, we already have data being shared among the, uh, the, the sites. Um, there's a point about DNA Nexus, how data across the sites being stored on the cloud. And so if we're also able to apply uh, decision support models to that data, uh, there's potential to be able to make them accessible uh, at the different sites. Uh, there, there are several potential models with one being bring your own data. So you bring your data, train the models, and maybe, maybe return those. Also, rules can be shared. I think one of the, I think the example that we've, we've pursued the most within uh, eMERGE has been this DocuBuild uh, platform where groups can share content and can, at their local sites, be able to brand them and provide local information. For example, uh, if you have, uh, if, so if you have um, laboratory results or interpretation of the laboratory results, but at your site, the insurance to cover that, that test may be a little bit different. So you may want to have local information about that. And you may want to brand it a little bit differently. And so we're starting to explore that idea a bit. Um, we were asked to talk a little bit about standards. A lot of that was discussed earlier, um, but um, one of the main challenges to this is that uh, institutions have multiple, whoops, 
institutions have multiple systems. So there's the EHR system, and then there's ancillary systems that are often holding the genomic data. And so having controlled vocabularies for bringing that data together is, is, a, is a concern. Um, uh, one of the, talking to some of the, my OMIM colleagues, one thing that's come up is that long QT syndrome, for example, treatment is informed by the genetics and by uh, EKG. And so you want to have both of those as part of the diagnosis. But um, in general, in the EHR, you might just have long QT syndrome. And so uh, how do we resolve that in the context of decision support? So another consideration, I started thinking about data quality and realized that there's multiple aspects that um, and, uh, that affect decision support instead of in terms of data quality. Um, first, decision support can happen at multiple time points. So it can happen before, during, and after decision, the decision is made. And the inputs may be different depending on where you're coming from. Um, and, and, and thinking about the patient and side effects, some patients may tolerate side effects differently than others or may want to uh, value quality of life. And so how is that taken, is how is that factored into um, when you provide decision support? And so that's one consideration. Also, with, within eMERGE, we've done some work on providing decision support for pharmacogenomic use cases, where you have a disease indication, um, you order a medication, then the alert is uh, fired that says a patient is at risk of side effects or adverse drug reaction. And so then the change is made. But in terms of decision support timing, this is after a decision has already been made. And so what's come up in our work group is that we might want to bring that upstream uh, where decision support is fired based upon the, the disease indication. And this is where the, the phenotyping work group efforts come into play. Um, but as others have brought up, being able to um, understand the uh, weighing sensitivity and specificity and how we actually implement those screening algorithms will be important. And so it may be that um, approaches like CDSKB could be improved to also include uh, these measures of timing inputs and data quality requirements for using them effectively at your sites. Uh, the third point is around diversity. Um, and so this, the, the main point I wanted to make with this is that uh, now there's capabilities to use uh, digital approaches to recruit study participants. And this is upstream of decision support. But if we're considering the learning healthcare system uh, uh, and we're including only study participants that are willing to participate, then what we're learning from those patients uh, may not impact as broad of a population as we might want to impact. And so the approach, some of these approaches are being explored in the All of Us program, where uh, different digital strategies to recruit are being explored. And also con you know, considering whether this is the, whether we want to recruit using under a research protocol versus operational protocol might be considered as well here. And then the final point that I have is around replicability, um, which is um, at, at any point in time, you might want to know what data was used, what evidence was available, and, and get the same answer. So be able to replicate uh, what, what, your, um, what your analysis was at that point in time. And um, a, an example uh, for clinical practice uh, is here and this work that eMERGE 2 did with CSER to really classify different types of genetic test results and how, we, how they might change over time and why it's important clinically. We do think about replicability a lot more in the research realm, but in the clinical realm, in this example, we have a 43-year-old female patient with, person with a personal and family history of breast cancer, has a VUS reported in BRCA1, and it's reported as such. And uh, so then there was no recommendation. But nine months later, there's a revised laboratory report that reclassifies the variant as pathogenic. And so then the recommendations change um, in response. And so uh, one clinical care provider may want to know why the decision, why, the, uh, why something happened in the past, and be able to understand why that was changed in the, in the future. 
And so being able to track the provenance of uh, what changes are made and when they're made, how those changes influence retrospective data analysis, as well as the impact of those changes on patient and research conclusions. And there, um, for all of these, there are actually approaches that exist and are being explored. Um, for that replicability um, issue, uh, Gene Insight, which is already part of eMERGE 3, has some approaches for um, notifying clinicians of updates and the evidence. And so um, that's one approach um, for replicability. For uh, Sandy will go more into some of the scope considerations. I know we've been talking about scalability, but scoping that, um, Scoping in terms of engineering considerations and if, if we want to have a broad impact will be an important consideration. Um, for in terms of uh, reproducibility, uh, having agreed upon standards and um, a model for enabling sites to use the same CDS uh, in terms of timing, inputs, and data quality. Uh, and if we want to do this upstream, uh, upstream patient screening approach. Um, we need to maybe narrow down to one specific timing of CVS that we want to focus on, what kinds of input and data quality requirements that we want to use, and document that. In terms of diversity, um, we may want to support a range of digital strategies depending on what our goals are, what our, what our research questions are, and replicability, choosing the standards and services that can be uh, accessed across the network. And so the main point is that um, considerations are not new and existing points, uh, approaches should be assessed to determine if they're sufficient, should be improved, et cetera. So with that, I'll pass on 